Welcome back. We've got another lab here getting started with Google Container Engine. This is a simple little lab to get you familiar with the process of spinning up a container cluster and then using the Kubernetes command line tool. What's that called again? You got it. Cube control. Using cube control to create a replication controller, which is going to create our pods, which contain our containers. And then we'll also see how to create a service, a load balanced service, which will create an external IP address so we can allow traffic into our cluster. Now, this is going to use the Guestbook app, a very simple version of the Guestbook app with a Python front end and a Redis back end, and we'll have two containers living in one pod. Now, if you watched our previous nugget on Google Container Engine, we went, went through all the resources, all the concepts, and then I kind of threw you to the wolves there with a pretty hardcore demo in that multi-tier web application demo where we had many pods with many containers spread across many nodes inside of our cluster. We had many services, many replication controllers. So there's a lot going on there. And if that was confusing, this is a, a perfect lab to really get started on because it's very simple, very straightforward. And we're just going to work with pretty much one replication controller, one service, one pod with a couple of containers inside of it. So I encourage you to try this lab out on your own. It's a simple lab that'll get you familiar with all the resources and tools that you'll be working with inside of Container Engine. All right, let's jump in. Now, if you do want to try this out on your own, let me show you where the lab docs are. Head over to, again, content.gcptrain.org. That'll take you to this page here. Click on CP100A, Google Cloud Platform Fundamentals. And down here on the right-hand side, all of our lab docs, we're going to be uh, working with Module 7 here, getting started with Container Engine. Again, don't forget about the lab command reference file. That way you can copy and paste commands if you uh, don't feel like typing them out. And also the lab code download, which will contain the code for the applications that uh, we'll be deploying here inside of our container cluster. All right, so I've got this locally already. Let me bring it up here, and here is the lab doc. So in this lab, we're going to use the web UI to create a container cluster, a group of computer engine instances that provide the foundation for our GCE managed deployments. And we're going to use cube control here to deploy a single pod with two containers running the guestbook application. Again, one of those containers is going to be our front end, our Python application, and the other container is going to host our Redis backend. All right, so it's a very simple, about a 15-minute lab here. The only thing you will need is the Google Cloud SDK installed and configured on your lab's instance. We are going to spin up that GCE lab instance and use that as our SDK. Again, you can use Cloud Shell for this. So if you don't want to use that instance or you didn't create this instance previously, you can certainly get away with using Cloud Shell. It's already got the SDK with the, uh, the latest and greatest version and cube control all ready to go. All right, so let's head down here. The first thing we're going to do is create that cluster, and this time... We're going to do it using the web UI. If you uh, watched our previous Google Container Engine nugget, I uh, took you through a pretty hardcore demo there, but I used the command line for everything. So I'm going to show you a few other things inside of here as well that we didn't get to see in that nugget. But uh, let's jump right in here to the web UI and make it happen. Here we are in the web UI. You can access this at console.cloud.google.com. Once you get here, make sure that you have the project selected that you want this container cluster to live in. As we have here, we have CP100, which is the project we created for this course, so we're good to go. And the next thing we need to do is get into Container Engine. A couple of ways to do so. We can drop down the sidebar here. Underneath our Compute Options, you will see Container Engine. You can also search for it up here. You can search for it up here. And if you pinned it down, you can access it quickly and easily up here in the shortcut bar. So I'm just going to click on that and that'll take us right there. Now to create a container cluster in the web UI, we can click on this button right here. And I don't have any container clusters in here, which is why we got that little message there. So let's give it a name. Docs call for CP100, so we will do just that. You can give it a description, choose a zone closest to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose US East 1B here. And then we're gonna choose a machine type. Now, you're only gonna choose the machine type once because this is gonna be a homogenous set of VMs living inside of our cluster. Right, this is going to create a managed instance group underneath the hood. They all need to be the same shape and size. So the docs call for N1 standard one, which is uh, what the default is anyway, which is going to give us one virtual CPU and 3.75 gigs of memory. So we have that chosen. You can also use a custom machine type here, which is awesome. So you can get really granular with your CPU and uh, memory requirements there. And then we need to choose our cluster size, the number of nodes inside of our cluster. And we're just going to do one for this lab. We will have one node that will host our pod that hosts our containers. So that looks good. We've got some, uh, some other options down here if you want to turn on monitoring and logging. Logging is turned on by default there. And that's it. Now we can hit create. Also notice our command line here. This will show us that uh, if you want to create this through the command line, you're going to use a gcloud container clusters create. We'll pass in all those arguments there to, uh, to make it happen. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and hit create. And that's just going to take a couple of minutes to spin up our cluster. So I'll let it do that and be back when it's ready.
Now, it's still getting created. I wasn't gone that long, but I wanted to point a few things out here. One, this is awesome. This visual notification is great because you can go and do other things in the developer's console. Keep your eye on this, and you'll uh, you'll get a visual notification when it's complete. You can also drop it down at any time and see what the status is of current activities. Another thing I wanted to do is head over to Compute Engine and fire up our lab instance while this is getting created. So, in Compute Engine, and hey, look at that. There's our node inside of our cluster still getting built. But let's go ahead and put a little checkbox next to our labs instance, which is currently stopped, and fire that up. Because we'll get onto that machine to do all of our cube control uh, work. All right, we're good to go. So that's spun up just fine. Notice our notification area now has a two next to it. Both of these activities completed. Our container cluster is ready, and our labs instance with our SDK on it is ready to go. Let's just head over here really quick, just to make sure there it is. Look at that. So it gives us our cluster size, our cores, and our total memory. So the next step is to get on to our labs instance so we can run some commands here and configure cube control. So what I'm going to do is rather than SSH through the browser, that way I don't have to manage multiple browser windows, I'm going to SSH onto that machine right from Cloud Shell. Oh, you can't get over how awesome Cloud Shell is. <laughs> so this is going to take a second to spin up here. And when it does, we're just going to do a gcloud compute SSH in the name of our instance, which is cp100-labs. All right, ready? gcloud compute SSH. What's the name of our instance? CP100-Labs. There it is. So that's going to get us right out of the machine. We're SSH'd in. And since I didn't provide, uh, I don't have any default set up in this session, nor did I provide a zone here. You have to choose the zone. So that is going to be 12. US East 1B is where I spun that instance up. And look at that. We're right on to our virtual machine, our labs instance. Now our next step is to clone the Git repository that contains our lab files. And in this case, it's just one file. It's a YAML file that contains the definition for our replication controller in that nice declarative syntax. And we already installed Git on this labs instant, lab instance when we brought it up. So I'm just going to paste the command in here, which is a uh, git clone and then that repository here. And that's it. There we go. Now we have it locally. Now next up, we're going to set up some defaults here for the SDK. So let's just do a gcloud config list to see what we currently have. And you can see we've got our default zone here, US East 1B. That's great. Our default region our default project. So what we're going to add in here is another default for, you guessed it, our cluster. So we're going to do a gcloud config set container cluster cp100. So now we won't need to default the cluster anytime we run any commands against it. All right, so let's go ahead and set that. Now another thing we're going to need to do here is run a gcloud container clusters git credentials for our cluster. And that's because we created the cluster inside of the web UI. So we essentially need to get the credentials into our session here so Cube Control can use them. If you created your cluster using the SDK, then you're good to go. It'll do that step automatically for you. But let's go ahead and run this. And eventually it'll say something like this. Yeah, Cube Config Entry Generated for CP100. So now our Cube Control will work against our cluster. And that should be it for our setup. We're ready to go. Now let's switch directories here to the Git repository that we just cloned locally here. And let's just do a quick ls to peek inside of there. Now what's in here is a guestbook.yaml file. And that's going to, again, contain that declarative syntax that we use to define our resources. So in this case, it's going to define our replication controller. And if we just cat that out here, look at this. So we are defining a rep. Let me get some more screen space here. There we go. So we are defining a replication controller. This first block here is the metadata for the replication controller. So this is going to be the name, and this is going to be the label associated with it. The key value pair, the key being name, the value being guestbook. The spec then is what we're defining this replication controller is going to do. So the first part here is the replicas. This is going to ensure that there's always one replica, one pod containing our containers running at all times, right? So so this replication controller is going to monitor our cluster to ensure that this value is one. And this is what's cool about this is that we can scale up or scale down our application at any time. We can modify this value to go up to three, and it will spin up two new pods and ensure that there's always three pods inside of our cluster. All right, and then we also have a selector. And the selector is, again, going to uh, basically say that this replication controller is going to target pods with this label, the name uh, key name in the value guestbook. And that's why when we define our pod down here, we're giving this pod the label name guestbook. So this replication controller is always going to apply to this. That means, say we do have five pods out there running. And we say, you know what, it's the end of the day, the traffic's dying down. Let's scale this back to two or three pods. 
that's how the replication controller is going to be able to target those pods to remove two of them. All right, so, so that's what labels are for. It helps the replication controller find. It's a nice loose coupling uh, between our pods and our replication controller. And then our spec here is where we're going to define the containers that live inside of this pod. We're going to have two containers. One is going to be our front end, which is right here. It's our Python guestbook. Here's the image that it's going to pull from the Docker registry. And then here's our second one, a Redis backend. And that's the image that it's going to pull from the Docker registry. So the next step is to create this replication controller. Anybody remember from, if, if you did watch our Google Container Engine Nugget, you remember what command we're going to use here? This is where we're going to use kube control. So let me get a kube control out there. What's next? You guessed it, create. We're going to use the F switch for the file name, not the G switch, the F switch uh, for the file name. And we're just going to pass in the file because we're already inside of that directory. So guestbook.yaml. And guess what? Boom, it's done. Now we can do a kube control, get what? If we want to see all the pods? Yeah, you got it, pods. And watch this. Boom, and now it's in a pending state because we're only creating one pod here. That's what the replication controller is going to create with two containers inside of it, hence the zero out of two here, but it's in a pending state. So it's still spinning this up inside of our cluster. Let's run that again. Still pending. Run it again. Still pending. All right, we'll give it a second to spin up. Now, while our replication controller is doing its thing, let me give you a visual here as to what our container cluster looks like. So we have our container cluster. Inside of here, we have a node. And that node is what? Yeah, it's just a GCE instance, right? So that's our node. Then we spun up a replication controller. Anybody know where that lives? Yeah, it lives on the master. And that's one of the beautiful things about Container Engine is it's a fully managed master. We don't have to worry about it at all. But that's where our replication controllers live. And that master is also where all communication goes through because it provides the endpoint that we're going to communicate with to get inside of our cluster and do things. All right, now, that replication controller spun up a pod, right? And inside of that pod are two containers, our front end and our back end. And we don't need to do anything special for these to communicate because they share the same networking space and the same context within a pod. If you remember our crazy demo inside of our container engine uh, original concept nugget, then the, in that demo, these containers lived in their own pods. So that's why we had our front end in its own pod, our back end in its own pod. And the nice thing about that is we could scale those portions of our app individually, but it also meant that we needed a middleman. We needed that, uh, that abstraction, which was called a service that provided DNS and allowed discovery between our pods. So we don't need that here, but we're still gonna need a service because we need to expose our front end here to the outside world, right? So people can hit that application. And that's gonna be our next step. All right, so I let that run for a pretty long time. So let's just uh, recall our last command here. Uh-oh, it doesn't, <laughs> my uh, SSH session must have timed out on me here. Let me fire up another Cloud Shell session. And let's just do a G Cloud Compute SSH onto our CP100 Labs instance once again here. 12 for my zone. And now we're in. All right, let's do that again here. That was a cube control. Get pods. And look at that. There we go. So there's the name. There is... Uh, two out of two, so we've got two containers running inside of that pod. Status is running. Restarts. I had to restart it once for, for some reason, and there's how old it is. Cool. So we're good to go there. So now we need to create the service, and we could do this by creating some YAML and, uh, and, and defining it declaratively, but we also have a command for this, for simple stuff. This will also create a service. So we're going to do a kube control expose replication controller guestbook, that's the name of our replication controller, on port 80, and the type load balancer here is what's going to give it a external IP address that we can hit from the outside. So this is going to create a service. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we can do a kube control, get services, and watch this. There's our services. So there's the Kubernetes service on the inside, and here is our guestbook service. And notice once again that our external IP is still getting generated. This will take a couple of minutes, but by doing this, we're exposing that pod to the outside, and the service will then proxy traffic from the outside going in to our pod. So this will just take a couple of minutes. Uh, when it's ready, I'll come back and I'll show you that external IP and we'll be able to hit it from the outside. So I ran that again, kube control get services, and there it is. Look at that. So we can grab this external IP address, fire up a new tab here, and we should be able to hit our guestbook application running inside of our cluster. Hey, there it is. Yay, GKE. All right. Everything works. Very cool. Let me show you a couple of other things here. Let's minimize Cloud Shell and let's head over to Compute Engine. And uh, let's log right on to our nodes. I'm going to SSH right onto this instance that is our container node here. And once this is on, we can, we can get on these nodes through troubleshooting of our containers. We can view the logs inside of our containers, all kinds of great stuff for troubleshooting purposes. But I'm just going to do a sudo docker ps. And look at this. Here are all of the containers currently running on this node. Here's our two. Here's our Redis backend. There is our Redis frontend. I'm going to copy this 
container ID here. And then I'm going to do a sudo docker logs, pass in that container ID, and check it out. We can see all the requests that are hitting this container. All right, the last thing we need to do here is clean up. And that's pretty simple to do using the web UI. We can just put a little checkbox next to our container cluster and hit delete. Boom, it's gone. Another thing we'll want to do to totally clean up is go into networking, go into network load balancing, and look at this. This was our service, right? Here's our IP address that's exposed. Same IP address as our application. That's all it's doing is creating a forwarding rule that's going to forward traffic to this target pool of virtual machines, which in this case we only have one, which is our node that was inside of our cluster. So we'll also want to delete this as well. And there we go. We're totally cleaned up. Now also don't forget, if you used are your lab instance here to spin that down. So your, your, your node here in GC, that'll get deleted with our container cluster. That'll take a little bit, but make sure you put a checkbox here or go into the instance details and hit stop to spin down our lab instance so we don't chew up our free credits. All right. In the CVT lab, now that we saw how to get started with Google Container Engine, we created our own container cluster containing one node, and then we used Cube Control, the Kubernetes command line tool, to create a replication controller, which manages the process of creating pods in the containers within. So it created one pod with two containers, one with a guestbook front end, one with a Redis back end, and then we created a service that allowed, that created an external IP address and allowed traffic into our cluster. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.